All right, what's up guys, Alan Brock here. I decided to dust off the old YouTube channel and uh, I'm going to really, really try this time to get into regular content. So I recently got back from Zion. An amazing, amazing trip this year. I can't wait to share the vlogs with you guys. I've got nine total days to share. Um, hopefully a lot of good images. I have already developed the black and white and I'm happy to say that those turned out with no surprises other than the mistake I knew I already made. Uh, the color film, I just got note today that it is being shipped back to me, so it will be back on Saturday or Sunday. I'll get that, uh, start getting it scanned, and get the videos out to you. Uh, very, very excited to be able to make the trip this year because with everything that was going on, I didn't even think that uh, the trip was going to be possible. So again, just um, I hope my appreciation and gratitude for being able to go out there this year comes through in the videos. Now. On these trips, you have a lot of time to think. And I started thinking, you know, I've got to get regular content out. And so I started thinking about, you know, what can I call a segment? And I thought five minute film Fridays, and that's kind of limiting. I could do five minute photo Fridays, but that's limiting as well. So we're gonna call this segment Photo Fridays. I've got ideas written down for about five of these, plus the vlogs coming up. So again, I'm gonna really try uh, this was supposed to be the year that I was going to have all the kids in school and have Fridays free, but then, you know, the virus hit. Hardly the worst problem in the world for me not to be able to get out content, but it is something I'm going to try to do. So this is the first one, and uh, let's, uh, let's see how long I can keep this going. So what we're going to talk about today is gear I use for backpacking. I didn't just go to Zion this year. I spent some time down backpacking in Escalante, and backpacking with large format gear takes a lot of planning it's a big undertaking both weight wise and logistics uh, wise and so i just want to share with you guys what i pack with me on the trip um, this is good for about a three to five night backpacking trip any more than that and you start running into not necessarily weight considerations but just bulk considerations with all the food that you have to carry so uh, let's just jump into it we'll start with what I kind of wear externally and we'll go from there so trekking poles I always hike with trekking poles one it just makes hiking easier but two, my tent we'll talk about in a little bit not a freestanding tent um, guys that have been watching the channel for a while know that so I do have to have trekking poles to set up my tent so these are just black diamond they're uh, not carbon fiber but a really nice trekking pole they've got kind of the cork handles here uh, rubber grips down below several different ways you can grip it which is important because if you're holding the trekking pole in the same place the entire time you kind of uh, get cramps in your hands so very nice trekking poles always go with these um, kind of not seen on the bag itself because this, this is about 55 pounds total and I don't want to put it on but I take two tripods with me. One is the one you can't see holding my camera back there. I use that for my 4x5 and this cheap little open lightweight tripod is for my video kit and it's something I need to be able to easily access in case I need to film myself, set up the tripod to get those shots where I'm walking away from the camera. So the easier it is to access the more video I'm going to do and to store this on the outside of the pack there is a little loop, a little elastic loop down here. It's meant for uh, trekking poles, but I just kind of pull out a leg and uh, thread that through the loop, close the leg, and gravity just kind of holds in place. That way, if I need to grab it, it's always on the left side, just whip it out. The only issue with that is if you're taking your pack off and you forget it's there, sometimes it kind of gets, uh, gets jammed and puts a lot of stress on that. But that is the open video tripod. Um, before we get to the main backpack here, what uh, my friends so lovingly call my fanny pack, it is the ribs front pack and this stores my video camera, uh, the GH5, which again you can't see. Uh, I'll also use a Rode video mic on that. Um, depending on the trip duration, all this gear I don't take on all trips, it just depends on kind of the trip duration. Uh, where I'm at things like that, but I'll either take a couple of extra camera batteries in here or if I'm going to be gone uh, Long term, I'll take some of these Goal Zero battery banks. This is a Sherpa 100. This would be for an extended trip. It's quite heavy 
this is about a 1.2 pounds, I believe. So definitely not for just a couple nights. This would be like for your five night extended trip with gear. Um, I've got smaller packs. Sometimes I won't even take them just again, depending on the trip. Also, I will, uh, in the other pocket this year, I took a GoPro just to be able to whip out quickly and get those hiking shots, talk to the camera. I actually vlogged a little bit with this this year. It's just so handy to have. Uh, the trip Justin and I took, um, I actually put a Mavic and I think four batteries and a controller in, the, in all this. So that was quite heavy, not for your average trip and Escalante drones aren't even allowed. So didn't take that this year. Uh, kind of had to stop someone from flying a drone in the uh, Golden Cathedral, which uh, that's a whole other story. So we'll get to the actual backpack itself. Um, while I'm hiking, uh, not just for the photography part, but as I'm hiking between campsites, you'll often see me with this on the exterior of my backpack. Osprey, and this is an Osprey Ether 70. Their larger packs have little loops for smaller packs um, this is a daylight plus and it's designed so that little buckles on the daylight plus will thread through these loops and you have that extra storage you can have this on your backpack um, i found that these buckles don't hold so well so i put a few little s beaners on the four points that it joins to the backpack and kind of clip that into place and that way you've got a sturdier hold but this pack I use for food. Um, a couple reasons I carry an extra pack. One, it's just easier to uh, store up and away from critters at night. Uh, and two, with all the gear I have in here, I just need the extra volume. Typical meals for me on backpacking trips are for, uh, if I can find the zipper here, breakfast and dinner, I like to do the dehydrated mountain house meals um, just whatever they have uh, in stock at rei i'll use one thing that i have uh, done over the years to save a little space is for some of the meals i will store it in ziploc bags here that i think my dog is torn into this one uh, but on the exterior of it i'll just put how much water to put in it and then i will save kind of these more rigid packs here dump the contents into here and mix it. Um, usually I'll have one bag for dinner and one for breakfast. That way you're not mixing your breakfast and dinner foods. But I found that putting it in a Ziploc bag just saves you a little bit of volume and any space savings I can get, I will definitely take. That is breakfast and dinner. Lunch is pretty much just a, a mixture of things. Um, I always take some tortillas, and uh, packs of tuna. I'll snack on that throughout the day. Um, I usually take two Snickers per day, uh, some energy gels from uh, Cliff Bar. I'll take a few actual Cliff Bars. And this may seem a little bit strange, but peanut butter. Peanut butter, this is quite heavy, but it's also very, very calorie dense. So I'll just shove spoonfuls of peanut butter in my mouth. In this little pocket, I'll store my spoon and uh, maybe some more bars and stuff in there. So that is the food bag. Very easy to just pack everything in here that needs to be stored up out of your tent and you can hang that from a tree, no problem. The exterior of the bag, my water bottles, I take three water bottles with me uh, on trips. I use these Vapor soft, uh, soft shell water bottles. They're a liter each. Uh, I love these things. They're actually quite sta quite sturdy. Uh, the material, you may think it's flimsy, but it can take a lot. I've had three fail on me and all three are my fault. Uh, one, the dog chewed up and the two others have, uh, I've rubbed them against a sandstone wall and they've just kind of abraded. But these are, uh, again, Vapure, V-A-P-U-R, Vapure water bottles. I love those things. Um, this is, my down jacket again only take this in colder weather but this is the mountain hardware ghost whisperer and it's not necessarily the warmest jacket in the world um, but on a lot of these trips i'm layering anyway it's very very lightweight and warm enough for the upper 20s um, 
quick side story about this i feel the need to tell everybody this that i come across you may be wondering why i have this hideous mustard yellow color and uh, this jacket is not the cheapest thing in the world i found one on sale and um, clicked on it and just a really really good sale i picked this beautiful slate gray and the sale price went away only this mustard yellow hideous color was on sale and i was kind of too cheap to pay extra for just the color so that's the story about why i have just the ugliest jacket color in the world i've had it for about three or four years now so it's kind of uh kind of grown on me for a bit but that's the reason behind the poor fashion choice there um in this exterior pocket here that's where i slide my uh, main tripod for the four x five and use the strap to hold it in place here on the other side i store the um Nalgene bottle of death here. If you know about this, uh, then you know, never ever drink from that. Uh, tent at the bottom of the pack here, Z Pax Duplex. Um, this, I, I know you could get a little bit lighter if you want to sleep in a bivy or a, um, or a, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A hammock. That's it. You can get a little bit lighter. This is 23 ounces, so it's pretty light. I love having the extra space. This is a two-person tent. It's huge. I can sit up in it, which is a big deal for me. Um, and a lot of times, if I'm in the Smokies, you're always under the threat of rain. So I just feel I need the tent as opposed to the bivy. It just gives me space to deal with a little bit more weather conditions. I've had this thing in rain, snow, desert conditions. It is just a wonderful tent. Quite a bit pricey, but uh, definitely, definitely worth the money. All right, so let's get into the contents of the backpack itself. And uh, it's going to be a little bit tricky now that I took the camera off. Oh, one more thing. Um, externally on these um, kind of waist pockets, I like to store everything in the same place. That way, each and every time, that way I'm not having to think about where I put something. So in one of these pockets is always my wallet and keys. And in the other pocket is actually a pocket rocket my msr stove just fits perfectly in this pocket on this last trip i didn't take all these items because i kind of shared with a friend that i went with we shared water filter stove fuel things like that some of the more common items but that always goes in the um, the hip pockets there so in the lid again i always store the same things this is into the camera gear part of it this little red bag houses my uh, loop for focusing as well as two shutter release cables little trick i learned from ben horn always carry two of those because one will fail and that's just a little bit of redundancy you can have that doesn't take up much weight at all uh, light meter self-explanatory um, in these pockets kind of a running joke with me is make sure you store batteries and store the correct type of batteries when you had the wrong battery and uh, it died, and yeah, that was uh, that was kind of a bummer. Uh, water kit. I'll talk more about this in just a second. But in here, I've got a few different water filters I take depending on kind of my mood and how fidgety I want to get with uh, with how I filter my water. But also, I always take um, take these little tablets just in case my water filter fails, which has happened a couple times. Uh, this particular water filter is the Catadyne Be Free. And again, I'll talk about it more in a second. I really want this to work, but I just don't trust it very much. But always take home message, always take tablets with you. Uh, headlamp, um, this is a Petzl Tika RXP. It's about five or six years old. They've replaced it with stronger models now, but this is the one that kind of has the auto exposure on it. It can be really bright if you're looking far away. And then if, you, uh, if you're looking at a map close by, it will dim itself. So really nice headlamp, even though it is, uh, it is showing some age there. My uh, just toiletries bag here, toothbrush, deodorant, um, duct tape. You never know when that will come in handy. I also keep a lighter in here. I keep a few different lighters throughout because you never know when, uh, when you'll need a fire. So keep that in a few different different areas. Speaking of fire, real quickly here, my fire kit. Always keeping this kind of hunter green bag here. A few different ways to start fires in here. 
got matches, a striker, a, an actual lighter, as well as cotton balls soaked in Vaseline. This is an excellent way to start a fire. You light one of those that will burn for about seven minutes and that gives you a good way to start a fire. Pretty much useless except for starting my stove in Escalante because fires were not allowed. Um, always take cord with you. Always, always, always have this no matter the trip. You never know when you're going to need it to uh, hang up clothes to dry, hang up food away from critters. So always take paracord with you. Uh, Escalante is a carry out uh, location. So took a couple wag bags. These are advertised as absolutely being airtight. And from experience, that is a lie. Uh, don't ask. So, moving on to the main compartment of the bag here. Typically, on backpacking trips, I will take two lenses with me. They're the, they're the lenses I've used the most. And I'll just keep them in these kind of lens wraps here, and I store them on top. Um, and just for protection, I'm just very careful with the way I hike. But my 90 and 180 millimeter lenses, they go with me. I've got four lenses total now. Um, honestly, can't remember if I took the 135 with me on this trip or not, but those two make all trips. Um, dry pants. So again, this is not something I take on every trip, obviously, but I did a lot of hiking in the Escalante River this year, so dry pants went with me. Uh, rolled up in those, neoprene socks. I actually take two pair of neoprene socks, one to hike in the river and then one just kind of as camp shoes to walk around camp when we're finished in the day. And I found out that that, uh, that works really successfully as opposed to having like a pair of sandals or something. Just a pair of neoprene socks uh, to help, ironically, keep your feet dry uh, in camp and they're quite warm. So uh, neoprene socks instead of sandals when your feet get tired at the end of the day. Uh, typically, I take four boxes of film with me. These are just four I grab, but usually the four I take are a box of Velvia, Ektar 100, and Delta 100. Then the fourth box is just an empty box that I empty all my film into that I've shot, and that is how I am able to uh, take just multiple shots because four by five is pretty easy to load in the film in the field. And so those four boxes or the three boxes of film just last me a long, long time. I've never come close to running out of film on a backpacking trip. Uh, next thing on top is four film holders. So I always load these with uh, four sheets of Velvia, two of Ektar, and two of Delta 100. And when I run out, I just load again, which takes a little bit, but again, not too bad. I store these just in a Ziploc bag, just as a little protection for from getting wet, but you uh, you kind of have to have a little bit of a trade-off when you're backpacking with this, so I don't store them anything in anything larger or uh, more protective because it just takes up too much space. So I've never had one break, knock on wood, but I'm always pretty careful with how I load it and picking up my bag and um, all that stuff it helps keep them safe. Um, Kind of in the clothing department, I've got some Patagonia base layer, a Patagonia base layer. This year I hiked with two of these, two base layers, because I like to hike in one and then sleep in another if it's going to get cold at night. If it's not going to be too cold at night, I'll only take one, uh, one pair of these, but I've got their thickest layer and their mid-size layer. And again, if it's going to get really cold, you just layer up at night. So take plenty of layers is, uh, is what I've always done. A toboggan, self-explanatory, mainly just use that to sleep in. Um, I guess a little bit more about clothing. So again, layers. Usually I'll hike actually in this shirt, just a synthetic short sleeve shirt. These pants are somewhat ironically called Zion pants. They're from Prana. Excellent, excellent hiking pants. A pair of hiking boots to hike in and then the neoprene socks to relax in at night um, or relax in around the campsite. If it's going to be really cold, I'll take an extra long sleeve shirt. Uh, my upper body gets cold sometimes, but usually with lower body, uh, a base layer and pants is all I need. A thin pair of gloves. These are just some Arc'teryx 
Uh, very lightweight gloves. They are waterproof and they're kind of uh, got a touch screen tip on the fingers. Okay, so back to the water systems. This is a Catadyne Pocket. I think that's what it's called. I'll annotate it if it's not. Um, this is a very expensive, very heavy water filter. I think it's like 1.2 pounds, maybe even closer to 2 pounds. It is a pump water filter. And the reason I got this is because I was so sick and tired of um, the Sawyer Squeeze or the Catadyne Be Free, those failing on me or clogging. Uh, this is cleanable in the field. Uh, it's a, a ceramic filter and it may be overkill, but I'm again so sick and tired of other filters failing. And the Escalante River is known for being very silty, so I wanted a uh, pretty robust pump that would handle it. Another thing we did to, uh, I'm going to set this down, kind of mitigate the siltiness of the river is I bought this bucket, just a folding bucket, 10 liter bucket. So we would scoop water up from the river, let it settle in this bucket for about 30 minutes. All the silt would settle to the bottom and then we would filter off the top. And that way you're not unnecessarily clogging uh, your filter up. That was a new addition this year and it worked out really well. Um, camp stove, the GSI Soloist, or is that the Kettleist? I don't know. I, th I think it may be the Soloist. And uh, just one of those uh, fuel canisters. My friend Tommy and I split these this year, so didn't have to carry quite as much. Uh, the second pair of neoprene socks that I just walk around camp in. What else do we have here? Okay, so film changing bag. I've had this one for years now. Uh, one of the elastic pieces on the arm has gone bad, so I've just hold rubber bands on it. But uh, this is what I use to change film in the field. It's a little bit clumsy. If you don't have a flat surface, I'll kind of just lay it across the back of my bag here to change film. But uh, it served me very well, and uh, that's how I'm allowed to carry uh, multiple sheets of film in the field instead of just relying on what's in my film holders. Okay, the camera itself. This year I had to take the Shinhao. Uh, normally on backpacking trips, I take the Intrepid, but I had a few light leak concerns. So I took the Shinhao, which was a bit of a bummer because this is a solid four pounds heavier than the Intrepid. Um, normally don't have to carry this heavy of a weight, but it was nice to be able to use the focusing screen on this camera, which is quite a bit uh, brighter than anything else I've ever used. What else do we have in our goodie bag here? Filters, I always take filters with me. It may use them on about one third of the shots, but if you don't have them, you really want them lightweight, relatively compact. Back to the sleep system, or I guess starting my sleep system, I haven't talked about that. I hate being cold at night. I'll do everything I can to stay warm. So this is the Thermarest NeoAir X Therm. It's one of the warmest, if not the warmest sleeping pad on the market. Uh, it's pretty remarkable. You can just rest your hand over it and after about 30 seconds, you can feel the heat being reflected back, um, back onto your hand. Very, very warm and quite comfortable too, uh, all things considered uh, for when you're sleeping on the ground. But that is a must have in order to stay warm. So that is it for the main compartments of the bag, of the pack rather. In the sleeping bag, that second set of a base layer that I was talking about. Again, sometimes only one set goes depending on the trip. I always take two pairs of boxers and two pairs of socks, one to hike in, one to sleep in. Always have fresh clothes to sleep in if possible. That's gonna make your night so much more pleasant. Kind of a luxury item, a pillow. This is a Sea to Summit Eros, the largest pillow they have, but uh, I just, I cannot sleep without a pillow. It hurts my neck too much. So this goes with me every trip. And then last part of the main compartment, sleeping bag. This is the REI Igneo. It's a 19 degree bag. And quite honestly, I'm a cold sleeper and that 19 degree number is pretty legit. Uh, as long as you're wearing a couple layers. Um, one night in Zion this year, 
the wind chill got down to 15 degrees. Now I definitely had to layer up inside this bag, but it, uh, it kept me warm. And especially, I mean, anywhere from the mid 20s and upward, you're gonna be warm in this bag. Um, it's held its loft really well over the years, even though I've compressed it, unpacked it, slept on it a ton, it's held up really well. So REI makes really, really quality uh, sleeping bags. As far as pockets go, I always carry a knife. This is a Benchmade, very, very sharp knife, very nice and a, a phoenix flashlight flashlight and a headlamp may be overkill but it's lightweight they go in my pockets uh, cell phone mainly for reciprocity timing and uh, framing with uh, the viewfinder app new this year uh, last thing i'll talk about is the uh, garmin in reach i got this for jennifer got me this for christmas as a way for her to not worry as much when I'm out hiking, because it was completely off the grid this year. And uh, it worked really well. You got, um, just a, a quick review of it, you've got preset messages that you can send. You can send out waypoints every so often, you know, 30 minutes, an hour, five minutes if you want. You got different subscription plans you can pay for. So it's very effective, it worked really well. We sent messages back and forth when I was down in the canyon. Uh, Garmin software is always a little bit clunky, um, and this is no exception. Uh, the things you have to go through just to figure it out are quite annoying. But once you do get it set up, a very quality piece of gear and uh, use it for navigation as well. It's got a map feature that you can work out your routes on. So the Garmin inReach uh, was a new addition and uh, a very good addition this year. So guys, that wraps it up for my first ever Photo Friday. Next Friday, uh, as long as the film come back, comes back good, I will get my preview video out for this year's Zion trip. Um, happy to be back guys I'm gonna to try to get regular content out to you now that the kids are somewhat regularly in school thanks so much for watching I hope this helped if you're planning on uh, backpacking with 4x5 gear and if you think I've left out anything that you may use let me know it's always good to have uh, additional viewpoints when it comes to gear because I can't test it all out but again thanks guys for watching and we'll see you next Friday